on one, and I felt like he was, the pressure of, of, of breaking the record was kind of getting to him. I just said, just play your game. Like, uh, if you play your game, it's not a question of if you're going to break it, Will. It's just when. Just, like, settle down. Stop putting all the pressure on yourself. And he hit a mid-range shot right before that, then he hit those two threes. And um, I told the coaches, when he breaks it, you know, I'm going to call a timeout so he can get the, the, the applause and attention and love that he deserves. So, uh, you know, Jamal said to him right after the game, he goes, I'm getting that in 20 games next year. But um, I'm, ha I'm happy for Will, man. He, he's, I've said this many times about Will Barton. We have asked him to wear lots of different hats around here. Starter, a bench player, small forward, two guard, backup point guard. Uh, and the guy is just always rises to the occasion. So I'm happy that it's over. Now we can just get back to playing basketball. And, uh, you know, we gave him the game ball, 769 made threes, incredible. Uh, and then the other guy who, you know, I was, you know, I love DeMarcus Cousins. And I was just so happy for him. First time since 2018 he's had a 30-point game. And, you know, obviously nobody replaces Nikola Jokic <laughs> because it's pretty damn good. You know, 31 points, nine boards, four assists, 12 contested shots, three deflections, three steals. Uh, he did it all. And uh, I'm just so happy for him because – most people had given up on him, and uh, all you need is somebody to believe in you. And he's here doing his thing for us, and I'm so happy that he is here. Yeah, you know, and sometimes it's just like, all right, I look at him, or it's like, and, he, and he'll, all right, coach, I got you, Mike, I got you, Mike. Uh, but what I love about it is like, cuz is so invested. Like, for a guy that is new to our team, he's so invested. He understands that this is the last stop. I mean, like, there 29 other teams, no, the phone wasn't ringing. So he's making this work in a big way. Um, and he's working so hard. He's getting in shape. He's losing weight. He, he, he's trying to be um, handling his emotions as best he can. Um, so I love it. Like, the one thing I used to tell people about DeMarcus when I coached him in SAC, I never had to worry if DeMarcus was going to show up to play. I never had to worry if he was going to compete. That guy loves to play. He hates to lose, and he competes. I'll deal with all the other stuff. If you got a guy that's going to fight and compete and, and, and get on his teammates and help guys out, uh, he's, he's been phenomenal. You ask everybody in that locker room, not just the productivity on the court, but in the locker room, off the court, um, he's made a huge impact on our team. There really is, Scott. I mean, uh, and, and you see it. You played in the league. You understand it. Um, there is a connection. And, and I think the guys, you know, when we first got them, you know, because when you don't know cuz, I think a little, some guys are intimidated. What's this guy all about? I heard he's crazy. The talent stands out. And, and then you realize, man, this guy's a good dude. Uh, this guy is, has been a great teammate. He's been a leader. He's brand new. He's getting on guys in the right way. So uh, I, I think he has the entire locker room's respect, not only for his talent and ability, but also for the way he's carried himself, how hard he's working, um, his role acceptance of playing behind Nicola. Uh, I, I really, you know, I, I just couldn't be more proud of DeMarcus Cousins. And, and I'm so, so thankful that uh, he's this with me and our relationship and our history that it's here. He's having this kind of second coming, if you will. And, uh, you know, I think the best is yet to come. I mean, let's, let's not get too far ahead of ourselves, but I tell you, I, I'm a fan. You know, I'm a proponent of DeMarcus. I was, you know, pumping his name to our front office. Um, and, and I give Tim and Calvin the front office credit because we went and watched him work out before he signed in Milwaukee. And then when he got let go in Milwaukee, it was, hey, let, let's, take, let's take a look at this. And I think a lot of that was because, yes, he's talented, and all the people in Milwaukee raved about him, and also because of my relationship with him and our history. So, uh, But, yeah, we'll, we'll see about what happens after this season. But all I know is right now he, he is owning the moment as Nicola's backup. Tonight he started, and he, gave, although he did all those numbers in 23 minutes. That, that's what's most remarkable about is his productivity is how he's doing it in such few minutes. That's really impactful stuff. Uh, 
Yeah, I mean, the hard thing about it is when you find out so late that, you know, like uh, Nicola, and I, I didn't know until late in the day that he wasn't feeling well, wasn't going to be able to play. And obviously, like, no disrespect to any other player, but Nicola is like the, you know, the everything to what we do, you know. And the best thing about having uh, DeMarcus is he's not Nicola, but you can still play the same way. Very skilled big. But to your question, Vinny, it was like, all right, well, we could – start somebody else to keep that bench unit together, but we knew we were going to have to disrupt somebody's rhythm. Throw DeMarcus out there. He's, he's a four-time All-Star. Let him start. And then Davon Reed and Fock, who can help that second unit. We played small. I thought Jermichael Green was great. Overall, I thought the bench was really good. I mean, you look at uh, Jermichael Green, 14 and 9. Bones gets 11. Uh, Bryn struggled to make shots tonight, but he gets 7. Uh, D. Reed helped us out, Faku. So overall, I think the bench unit, even though it wasn't the same group, still played at a high level for us. <laughs> well, I knew that, like, um, I, I think I wanted to limit his stretches to, like, you know, no more than six minutes in a row. And so when I took him out at one point, it was like six minutes, I go, hey, and he goes, yeah, I need a blow. Yeah, I mean, because he'd ran six in a row, and he's playing hard. And we're asking him to do a lot. It wasn't like he's just out there setting screens. You know, rebound, defend, score, run our offense through you. Uh, but, yeah, he was gassed. But, um, you know, he keeps on playing like this. That's the great thing about it. You don't have to run Nicole into the ground. You have a two-pronged attack with Nicole Jokic as a starting center and DeMarcus Cousins as your backup. I don't know if there's another team in the NBA that's that got that kind of quality depth at the center position. Um, I want to say uh, probably he's lost around 8 to 10 pounds. Yeah. And the thing I love about it is um, he's really committed to it. I mean, like he's doing everything he can to, to not only help himself, but more importantly help this team, just being selfless. And, uh, and he's really committed to it, which I love. I, I'm just so happy for the kid. Thank you. Thank you.